I don't care who wins the national championship. I don't care who wins any of the other bowl games left to be played. Northwestern, this is the best story in college football for 2023. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with, with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. And this is a great discussion right here. Northwestern wins the Las Vegas Bowl. 14 to 7 over Utah. And this is not simply just another meaningless bowl game in which one mediocre team defeated another one. They both finished at 8 and 5. There are so many layers to this story. Let's get to it. First and foremost, that whether it's David Braun or Pat Fitzgerald, Northwestern is going to be underappreciated and underestimated. Consider this that Pat Fitzgerald's teams finished in the final AP Top 25 five times. Do you know how many times they were ranked in the preseason poll? Zero. (laughs) Do you know that in 2018, this Northwestern team got down by two scores in the Holiday Bowl to this same Utah program? They were a full eight-point underdog. And guess what they did? They came back and won the game 31-20. to Northwestern, after all the upheaval following the hazing incident or the alleged hazing incident that is still being battled by former coach Pat Fitzgerald and by all the discussion during the broadcast and what we've heard from the assistant coaches on this staff, they all say it's a bunch of nonsense. I don't know. I have no idea. I want to know the truth. And we hope We pray that the truth would be known because that is what is most important, that there is justice. But the people connected to the program, certainly the players, were in support of Pat Fitzgerald and said again that it was complete nonsense and there was no truth to it. And they hold to that story up to right now. So let's get back to this situation. And Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern, of course, has had a rough go in recent years, 1 and 11 last year. So then he is let go after the hazing alleged incident. And nobody gave this program, gave this team any chance of doing anything. David Braun was elevated to interim head coach. And during the season, once he got off to a great start, elevated to permanent head coach. And the team fought first for Pat Fitzgerald to keep his job. Then they fought for David Braun to be named the head coach, when Pat Fitzgerald was let go. And David Braun has delivered in spades. It is truly amazing when you think about what he has done. <laughs> this team finished at 7-5 and five in a season in which they were supposed to win, let's say, one game, two games. They had Wagner on the schedule. So a lot of people thought, okay, well, they'll beat poor Wagner. And if we would have known now that they beat Wagner 23-20 to and knew no other game results for 2023, we would think, yeah, Northwestern went 1-11. They only beat Wagner 23-20. No, this Northwestern team had a remarkable season. This is crazy how good they've been. Going into this bowl game against Utah, Braun stated it a number of times, the admiration and the respect that he has for Kyle Winningham and that he wants to model the Northwestern program After this tough, sturdy, determined, disciplined, gritty Utah team where toughness rules over everything else and discipline, and David Ron is off to an amazing start. Pat Fitzgerald, through Sean McDonough, the game announcer, said that uh, he can't comment or couldn't be interviewed because of legal circumstances, but he wanted to let everyone know that he is so proud of David Braun and so, so proud of this football team. Northwestern came into this game, and they really added to this statistic tonight, but they came into this game with the best turnover margin difference from one season to another of any team in the Big Ten this century. And we had a matchup of two teams that ranked in the top ten in turnover margin, period. Of course, Utah had five defections to the NFL, Players moving on to the NFL early, including three of their stars on defense. All right, let's get to the game action. We've got so much more to talk about Northwestern football here. Their punter, 
did a remarkable job tonight. Hunter Renner, he pinned uh, Utah down at the two-yard line. Uh, the gunner just caught the football in midair. Utah was the team that actually showed a little bit of life on offense, very little early with a 55-yard drive. Jaquindon Jackson, the former transfer quarterback from Texas, was the guy that had uh, most of the yardage there. Utah uh, took some shots, and then it was defensive back. Jaheim Joseph, who had two interceptions. The first one was a brilliant play after Utah shouldn't have got away from the running game. They were moving the ball. They went all the way from their own two, all the way out to midfield, took a shot, and Jaheim Joseph played off of his receiver and read the quarterback and played on the football, made a great diving interception in the end zone to thwart that Utah drive. Then Joseph had another interception at midfield a little bit later. And Northwestern drove all the way down to the one-yard line. They went for it on fourth and goal, but they missed shot the tight end in the corner. Northwestern also had two missed field goals. They've got a good field goal kicker, but off tonight. So they could have had a nice lead at halftime. Uh, but Northwestern uh, had really good field position throughout this game, controlled the field position battle. Ben Bryant had two shots to the tight end on the eventual touchdown drive for the first score and the only score in the first half. Marshall Lang had uh, three catches for 39 yards and then the touchdown shot to Cam Johnson, who caught 54 passes this year. Ben Bryant, the one-time Cincinnati signee, who then went to one of the Michigan schools, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan. Then he came back to Cincinnati, wound up at Northwestern, suffered through that horrible one-win season last year. 23 of 34, 222 yards and two touchdowns. And if you watch the game, he was banged up throughout the game, especially in the second half, had to leave the game at one point. Ryan Helinski came in, the former South Carolina quarterback who has suffered with this Northwestern program. Helinski was off, we'll just say that. Uh, so Bryant was needed, definitely, but he pulled it back together, got back in the ball game in this one. One minute drive, and this is not Northwestern football typically, what we would expect. After Northwestern stopped Utah late in the first half, they got the ball at their own 15-yard line with just over a minute left in the first half, and they moved it down the field like bam, 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 bam. Some beautifully crafted plays and connections between Bryant and his wide receivers. And they moved it down the field, but they missed the field goal and only led 7 to nothing at halftime. But Northwestern at half had 185 yards of total offense to Utah's 59. Complete dominance on the defensive side. Okay, we go to the second half. Northwestern, the Xander Mueller a strip of Jackson was remarkable. He's engaged with a blocker, and he's able to strip the ball from the running back at the same time. And uh, you get the recovery from Jalen Glover. And Northwestern thwarted a Utah drive right there. The Utes did finally get some offense going. Bryson Barnes in this game. So he is hitting the transfer portal. Wanted to maybe audition, play one final game with his buddies. Uh, but he did not look good. He had five yards passing at halftime. And he missed throws all over the field through those two interceptions in the first half. But finally made a couple throws. They got the run game going. We had a 7-7 ball game, even though Northwestern should have been up with the two missed field goals and the missed shot on fourth and goal at the one, they could have been up 20 to nothing. So we had a 7-7 game. Northwestern drive gets going. Ben Bryant again, knocked out of the game. Ryan Holinsky comes in. And then Holinsky missed everything, including a fourth and seven throw at the Utah 34. So they give up the football there. But the Northwestern defense fights right back and stops completely just blows up a play at the line of scrimmage on a fourth and two and stopped the Utes at the Utah 46. I think that they should have punted there. We got a 7-7 ball game. Ball's at midfield. Bryson Barnes has been awful. You could punt them inside the 5 or 10-yard line and play some field position in the final seven minutes of the game. There were seven minutes left at this point. But Northwestern goes all the way down the field. Bam, bam, bam. Ben Bryant, two beautiful throws. Well, the first play was to A.J. Henning, the Michigan transfer, who made a remarkable diving catch. He was in midair, brought it in, and then Bryant made a beautiful over-the-shoulder throw uh, against the right sideline to the right corner by the pylon for the touchdown to go up 14-7. to So Utah had one more shot. They were moving the ball, but had a fourth and three at the Northwestern 38, 
And Brian Barnes could have hit the open receiver. He ran a stick route. He was open right at the first down marker. Barnes was late with the throw. It allowed the defensive back Garrett Hollis to break on the football. And Northwestern has your win. So David Braun uh, did not hire these coaches. So this is not his coaching staff. This is the coaching staff he inherited from Pat Fitzgerald. And it's estimated they're going to lose about five coaches. Uh, The defensive coordinator that he has already named to take over is Tim Merrigal, uh, who is currently the linebacker coach. And then you've got the offensive coordinator, Mike uh, Bajakian. And unfortunately for him, he stood up for Pat Fitzgerald, wore a T-shirt in support of Pat Fitzgerald after the firing. And the administration didn't like that. So they said he's definitely out at the end of the season, but he stuck with it. You got to credit him for supporting the head coach, David Braun, even though he knew his days were numbered. He's looking for a job. And uh, this Northwestern team marches into 2024. Of course, the new Big Ten and what they're going to face in terms of a schedule isn't going to be too much different than uh, the current Big Ten situation. They've got an August 31st opener against Miami of Ohio. Their only Pac-12 game of sorts is against Washington on the road in Seattle. And they still have two open dates from uh, in terms of non-conference games that have yet to be scheduled. 2024 recruiting class for Northwestern. Can you believe this? According to 247 Sports, number 102. <laughs> they just don't care about recruiting uh, stars at Northwestern. It's about the fit. It's about the development. And it's about the smarts and the toughness there. All right. We know that Utah's marching on to the Big 12. They are going to be a huge factor, you would think. And probably, arguably, Oklahoma State's there, Kansas State, the best program in the Big 12 going forward. Their non-conference slate looks like Southern Utah, Utah State, and BYU. But this night, all about David Braun and Northwestern. The Wildcats complete an incredible 8-5 and season. I would love to see them ranked in the top 25. They shouldn't be. They're not quite that good. But, man... Best story of the year in college football, the Northwestern Wildcats and David Braun. Your thoughts below. Let's talk some Northwestern football, folks. Let's give them some cred right here at the Voice of College Football.